Welcome to Coworking Out Loud, Matt. I am absolutely stoked to talk with you today. Thanks, Kat. I'm glad to be chatting with you too. Yeah, I, um, I've been really looking forward to this one and to give you a little bit of context. So I grew up here and then I moved away and was gone for like a couple, few decades. Okay. And then when I moved back, so I had become a marketer and I was working in coworking and I was doing content and didn't know anyone doing that kind of thing in Park City or Salt Lake. So just started kind of reaching out to people, connecting on LinkedIn a lot, just kind right. of seeing like, what's the deal with Silicon Slopes? What's the deal with ShareHouse, which we, I want to talk more about, but just like trying to learn about the ecosystem. And you were one of the people who popped on my radar. Like I liked the stuff you were sharing on LinkedIn and seemed like a, a cool fellow, an interesting person to know kind of in this larger ecosystem. And then um, one day you dropped a LinkedIn post and you completely blew my mind with your vulnerability, with your openness, with your courage. And the post, like, I want you to share a little bit about it, but it was basically telling people that five years ago you were released from prison and that in the five years since you felt like you were doing this kind of dual life where right. on the one hand, you're a marketer, networker, kind of doing the thing. And on the other hand, you had this experience that um, a lot of people couldn't relate to or didn't know anything about. So will you just pick up? from there and give me sure. like, what was your thinking around it and how that sure. all came out? Yeah. I mean, without, I mean, I, I, you know, I think one of the first things is want to be sensitive to, you know, like I, I, I was in prison for 15 years. Um, and there's a lot of people, I mean, I've made some pretty serious mistakes in my, in my, in my past, um, hurt some people and have also had that happen to me. And so I don't necessarily want to, like, I think one of the things from that post is some people felt like I was glossing over any harm I might've caused or not mm. taking responsibility. So I do want to kind of just say that now, like talking about me being happy or successful or trying to find peace internally and externally is, does not diminish, um, you know, the past or things that have happened. I think it's important to keep those kind of those views in totality, but also it's important, I think, to understand that, you know, moving on does not mean like you're forgetting or that nothing ever happened. And so, um, with that being said, it, it yeah, I, I, I went into prison at 22 years old. Um, I, I grew up in California. I came out to Utah. I was doing the whole BYU thing. Um, and yeah, 15 years of just kind of watching, waiting. I, I mean, I was sitting on the sidelines is kind of how I feel about it with mm -hmm. watching Silicon Slopes and all these things changing. And um, I really, in many ways, didn't know what I wanted to do other than I just loved, I, I figured entrepreneurship was the like the long-term path to finding my own like financial stability and independence. And, you know, I getting out into this kind of like our, this environment, our state. And, um, I've, I've also always cared a great deal about education. Um, it helped me tremendously and I saw it transform the lives of many men in, in there. And so, you know, basically I started living these two lives where I was going to school. I was go going to the university of Utah. I was an older guy. So I was basically twice the age of many of my <laughs> students, uh, you know, fellow students, um, which was really scary and, 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 and hard in some ways, but easy in others. Um, essentially like I, when you hit college, you don't realize that how, how important time management and like understanding what you should or shouldn't be doing with your time is like so many kids just waste time doing stuff that that's not even important. So I might not have felt like super confident in a lot of my abilities, but hitting school, I had that wisdom to know what I should be focusing or not. So I was able to be really successful. And at the same time, I'm volunteering with these other groups and becoming really active in the social justice space. Um, I started participating in some lobby movements in Washington, DC, where I was speaking about my own lived experience to try to help um, change how the federal government was was like funding education programs through Pell Grants. Mm. And thankfully they were they did change that law that year. So I kind of started doing these two different things where I was building up my own career and started doing marketing and getting my first couple of like jobs. And then also doing social justice work and trying to help change the lives of people that were uh, had been affected similar to how I was. And I always kind of felt like I, I hated how those two things were separate. Mm -hmm. And um, I was even starting to do some consulting with marketing for nonprofits that were active in the social justice space. And it, it was kind of, it felt really great in those spaces. It was my lived experience was an asset, not a liability. Whereas 
you know, when you go to apply at jobs for some of the big tech giants in this state, they just don't know how to handle, they don't know how to respond. Like I've had two different experiences with two really big names here and one just was really, really bad and the other one was positive, but I didn't get a job from either one, even though on paper they thought I was great. So, mm-hmm. it, so, so a lot of that post was really about me just kind of feeling like partially to get in front of it. Like I didn't want it to one day be something where somebody was mad that Matt had built up a community or done cool stuff and nobody knew that he had a past but also really the majority of it was for my own peace of mind. So it's on my LinkedIn profile now, my Twitter profile as well, where I'm, you know, formerly incarcerated. So I don't feel like, I, I feel like I have taken some of that control back. So if I go to a networking lunch or an event and I feel like I want to bring it up to somebody, I'm not scared at like, I'm letting the cat out of the bag now. It's like, this is a part of who I am. It's part of what makes me who I am and what drives me and all those things. So that was one of the big reasons why I did it was just kind of like, just wanted to unify those two different parts of me, but then also stop living in fear of that. You know, my, the, the co-founder at Q pilot, David, he's like a huge proponent of me and my story. And he's been gently nudging me to, to want to do more of that. And I think it's just important too, for other people that are still struggling with those things and, um, other people with records or people that are starting their lives over. Um, it's kind of ironic, you know, I was raised by a single mom, but I also identify a lot with a lot of women that are, you know, have become divorced. They're single moms and having to restart careers because maybe they were not really focused on that because of kids for a long time. And, you know, in a similar situation, you, you go from thinking that you're not going to bring a lot of value or a lot of worth and trying to figure out who you are in the career, um, you know, the career world. So anyway, that was a big tangent and big answer, but yeah, that's kind of long and short of it. I love it. And the thing that really struck me and I've seen this happen over and over and over again is especially like in the professional world where we're kind of, we have this mindset that we're supposed to be like, here's my professional self and here's, you know, all, all the things I've done and stuff while not bringing other things to the forefront. But what I've found over and over again is that when we like break that barrier and let our humanness come through right. and be our real with our story, with ourselves, with the people around us, it like pushes things into a whole new dimension, which is exactly what I experienced with you. You went from being like somebody who was around who I'd probably bump into one of these days into like, whoa, this guy is the real deal. Like this guy, like um, real story, real authenticity, genuine connection. Like some people might have been repelled and like not into your story, sure. but those who. Um, I have a feeling it brought a lot of us closer in of like, oh my God, that like, not just the courage, but just the humanness of it, right? Like, I think anytime we are brave enough to bring our whole selves to our life, to our work, to all those things, um, I found the only good things happen. So I'm curious what what the response to was that? Were there any surprises? Um, uh, Well, the surprising thing is, you know, that post had like 180,000 impressions and like over a (laughs) thousand likes and comments and stuff that went pretty viral for me. And there was maybe about like 10 people that commented something that was maybe not, some of it maybe was a little bit rude or a little bit maybe Mm. ignorant. Um, you know, but what's, what's interesting, Kat, is that I learned that I, you know, I can actually delete those comments, (laughs) you know, the the first, the first couple I engaged with and I would respond and, and, but, you know, as soon as it becomes clear that somebody isn't actually interested in learning about me and what right. I'm talking about, they're just putting their own spin on what they see me as, I cut them off. Cut them off. And the funny thing, too, you mentioned about people that might have been turned off for it. I, I don't know how many people were or not because they don't talk to me. Like, right. they were turned off by it. I, I you know, like, it, it. I haven't had the experience of having to go find a job since that post. And, you know, maybe I'll get more doors, put it closed in my face. But... I've actually worked with a lot of people that are have records that are looking for jobs since that post. And one of the things that I tell a lot of people is, you know, the thing about it's, you should focus on finding the people that see you for who you are. And so the, the, the fun thing about being formerly incarcerated is that now on my LinkedIn, if you, if you really don't like that, you're, you're never going to follow me. You're never going to interact with me. You're never going to give me an interview. You know what I mean? And, 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 and that's fine. I get to find a lot of people that do care about that and respond to authenticity. And, you know, one of the things I was terrified about going back to school and was like, I was going to stick out like a sore thumb, right? Like I'm this older guy. You have this fear when you get out that people are just going to look at you and know, like, right. 
Like I had a buddy who who was paroled a couple of years ago and he's trying to figure out how the debit credit option at a gas station works when you're like trying to buy like a soda or something. And he was fumbling with it. And he's like, oh, this guy just knew that I had just gotten out of prison. <laughs> but the yeah. irony is that we don't know how other people interact. And so at school, I was always concerned about sticking out. But in reality, everyone is trying to find who they are. Everyone is trying to find where they fit in the world, whether you're 20 years old or 40 years old or 60 years old. like most of us are still kind of struggling with that or trying to find that. And so, like you said, when you're able to be authentic or be genuine, it, it makes other people that are struggling with that as well, like feel safe that they can do the same thing. And so that's been the primary response. I've had a lot of positive, I've had a lot of people have pulled me over at networking events and have shared experiences, whether with themselves or a family member. And so it's really just about trying to create a space. I think where we can all feel a little bit safer to share with what's scaring us or what we're carrying. And, and that's the thing that's just so frustrating sometimes is that it's like, everybody's got something, no matter who you are, whether you're the, whatever end of the spectrum you are, there's something you're dealing with and that's okay. And to, to, I want to live in a world where we accept people for whatever it is we're doing. And we just try to understand people better. And that's the world I want to be a part of creating. Me too. Matt. So I was excited I also to talk to, to live, you. I also <laughs> so I want to live in that world. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I feel like everybody has a superpower and I think we are all looking for a place of belonging. And I also think we can't find genuine connection and belonging until we're willing to be vulnerable and real right. about who we are. I just feel like, like you can have layers of connection, but that thing that we're seeking like that that true sense of, of belonging and connection. I'm not sure you can do it while you're withholding things, you know, and yep. that's what really, really struck me. Um, so there's, there's so much, there. <laughs> there's a lot there. Uh, the, you know, I'm curious, first of all, I mean, I want to ask how you would advise people, whether it's incarceration or some like people who feel different how you would advise them that moment of truth where, cause I know you were nervous. You said in that post sure. that you felt nervous and that you really had to step into vulnerability. Um, people who are at that moment, like what would you say to them? Yeah, it's an interesting idea because, you know, I have friends that got out and wanted to hide it and have been hiding that they don't want people to find out. I have a really close friend who's had a couple of jobs that they didn't know because they weren't doing background checks and, and he, he's preferred it that way. Um, I think that it's so funny because, um, looking for a job, there's a really close metaphor. It's like dating. Right. And so th these are the two, and, and, and those are the two biggest, like powerful experiences I've had since, since my release is mm -hmm. figuring out who I am in the dating world and then figuring out who I am in the, in the professional world. And, and the reason I bring that is because it's, it's the kind of things like, when do you bring it up? And that's kind of that, that question of how I think about or lensing the answer to your question about whether people are thinking about being vulnerable or not. And so there's this idea of like, you don't want to walk around with a sign saying like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a felon <laughs> because then people will just run or, right. or the people that are attracted by that maybe are just like, they like the sensationalism of it. Right. So mm. you, you're, you're not, you're not finding your audience. And at the other end, you, if you never tell somebody, people that come to know you and care about you potentially could have their feelings hurt or feel betrayed and, and not to get too deep into whether that's right or wrong. So, so where do you find it in the middle? And what I found with, with, with two things, one with, with dating was, um, I was probably telling people a little too soon cause I was really nervous about it. And, and it often became like a, I was putting myself out there to see if I'd be rejected or not. Oh yeah. And, 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 and I think the approach I, I, as I slowly developed more was I, I, I've, needed to decide that this is somebody I cared about that if they, that they knew. And so when I, when I was thinking about it that way, I, I, I stopped worrying so much about when they would find out or not. And it said, I was thinking, this is my story and something that's yeah. personal to me and I care about you. And I would like you to know about this, to know me better. And, and people would respond really positively to that. And the same thing with in, in the, in the work environment is, is similar too, because the idea is when do you bring that up? And so I, I recommend to a lot of people that if you're dealing with a recruiter, somebody's prof job is professionally defined as uh, somebody, you should tell you should ask the recruiter if they're felon friendly, if they're gay or trans friendly, whatever, whatever it is that you're carrying, because they're going to tell you right away 
and how they respond. If they've never had that question before, they're not going to have a good response. They might yeah. even be polite, but they'll kind of like, well, I'm not sure if, because what you really want to find is somebody who says, oh, we, we love people like that. Like we have hired and interviewed people like that. And, and that's not a deterrent. If anything, we view that as uh, we view diversity as something like, so you want to find that as a response. So, so the idea is you don't go through this, invest all this time in these interview processes to find out at the end. Why would you do that when you can find out sooner whether they're going to be open to that or not? And, and, and you can control the narrative that way as well, where you don't have to tell the recruiter who, what it is. You just are asking those questions to find out more about their, about the company you're working for. And then as you're interfacing with that company, you can decide at what point, whether you feel like it's appropriate to bring it up or not. Um, but since felons often are like a deal breaker for hiring processes, it's really good to get that out of the way. Yeah. All right. Um, but as you develop some of these relationships or rapport with these interview process or companies, you want to meet other people that work there and ask them the same things. But, but honestly, I feel like what you said that there's, it's just sad to think that somebody doesn't want to share something because they're afraid that they're going to be rejected. And this is sometimes hard to explain, but it's like rejection happens every day. And sometimes we fixate on that one thing we have that we're worried about being rejected for. And we forget that there's plenty of reasons why people might not like us or listen to us or want to be around us. And we should, we're doing ourselves a disservice by hiding things because we're afraid of what people will think. And that if we can have just a little bit more courage in wh whether that's wearing a pin on your shirt or whether that's just being more open with, with how you're talking about what you believe in, I think that you will find more people that are receptive to that idea that are receptive to who you are. Um, even people that are like, have no interaction with like people that are not white middle-class religious. Cause we're in Utah. Like even mm -hmm. a lot of those people are still kind. There, there are plenty of unkind people in the world, but there are plenty of kind people too, that will at least want to listen and, and know more and know who you are, even if you're not their person or their type of person. And so I think that it's, I, I and I'm, I genuinely believe that the world is kind. There's it's full of horrible stuff. Yes. But that, that most people given the opportunity, and so some of that's just practice. It's about practice, about when's the right time to bring it up, right? It's not something like you bring up in the first minute of an interview. It's not something you bring up in the first minute of a date, right? You, you try to find that time and talk about it, ask people questions about how they feel about those types of things. And you can find an opportunity to share more about yourself. What about on a very public platform? Like that's, that's a little bit different. That's Are a little you different. sweating? I was, I, I will say, um, I posted that and I got about, a, I got a, I got a text like two minutes later from Lindsay Ivy. Um, she's a big networker here in Utah. And, uh, I met her at a networking event years ago when I was first just trying to figure out all this, this landscaping ecosystem. And she just said, you know, I, I think you're great. I love you. I totally support you. And it was just, that was like the bit of jump that I needed. And I told yeah. a few people that I was going to do it ahead of time. So they knew, um, but honestly, it was like everybody I've ever connected with in Utah was liking that post. Many of them were commenting that they supported me and cared about me. Many people wanted to learn more and, and, and talked about, wanted to just know about, about me, right? Like, you know, I did some lunches and some other things with people that are just like, I just like, I just want to know more. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, you know, and, 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 and that's what was just really, really heartwarming is that, um, that a lot of people positively responded to it it's not been a thing as much as I thought it would be like, I, as far as I know, Kat, I'm like at a network event. I, people are not talking about me, whispering about me in the corner. I haven't <laughs> noticed anything like that. If, it, you know, and that's the fear, right? That you're going to be judged or rejected. And a, a lot of people have just, you know, maybe the next time I saw them, it was a bigger, it was a stronger handshake just because they wanted me to know that they, but a lot of people don't know how to bring it up. That, that's the other thing too. Is yeah. like a lot of people are like, how do I bring this up to you? It's, you know, it's like, you know, it's, <laughs> and so they're, they're and many times it's kind of uncomfortable. So you try to reset to it. For me, I, I don't say everybody, you don't need to be like shouting it from the rooftops, but I'm so active on LinkedIn that it felt like it was the, it was the right platform. Now I haven't done that on Facebook or Instagram um, or Twitter or, you know, I'm not going to launch a YouTube series on it or anything. But for me, because I gen, I, and, and for me, I do believe in gen, that genuine connection. So in many ways, I've always felt like I was hiding a little bit about who I was and that people were missing the full picture of who, of who I am. And so that's one of the reasons I did it. 
you know, I think the world is kind to, and even with the horrors, I genuinely feel like people are good. And um, I wasn't going to bring this up because I was afraid of making like a false equivalency, but you brought us up. So I want to go there because there's something I can very much relate to years ago when I first came out, I would tell people almost like a confession, right? I'd be like, oh, you know, like to see what they would do. Like I'm gay and then like wait and see. And now it's like decades later, I just like, um, I'll say something like, oh, my partner, such and such, she's something, something, something. And I just leave it out there. Like it's not for someone to reject. Like if it's for someone to reject or accept me, that's for them. It's not for me to like check it out and be like, I don't know, Matt, are we going to be okay? And within that, like even all these years later, it's comfortable and comforting for me to hear someone like you, someone I meet. It's always nice when people just like validate their acceptance. Right. So I don't know if that, if that, if you can no, it, relate to that. It, it, it totally is. And it's not a false correlation. I think in many ways it's the same thing. And, and it's, I mean, the, the, in fact, if anything, like it's, it, well, it's easy for people to wrap up that as part of my identity. Like, oh, you went to prison. You're like a horrible person or somebody saying to you, like, something's wrong with you. You're gay. It's mm-hmm. like, like, wow, that has nothing to do with whether I'm a person worth knowing or not. Like it's, I, you know, there's a lot more to me than that. And so I do think that there's something, yeah, we, it's like, a, like you said, it's like a confession, this idea of like, I want people to know this, like, like, because I want you to say that I'm okay. And mm. I think like learning to accept who you are means that you're learning, you're learning to be okay with other people's opinions or not, or, or understanding that those opinions aren't like, that's a boundary. How you think about me actually has very little to do with myself personally and what's motivating or driving me. That is, that is about you. And I, and I like bringing those barriers down when people want to have that kind of reaction. But I'll say one of the best advice I ever got, um, was in prison by this guy who was done 30 years of time, committed some pretty heinous stuff, was a white supremacist, was in many ways, everything that is bad or scary or ugly about prison. And he actually gave me the best advice I, I may have gotten my whole time there, which was, he said something like, you know, you get to choose how you talk about what you did or didn't do to get here. And Mm. if somebody asks you about it, you should be asking yourself, why do they want to know? Do they want to know because they care about you? Then by all means share with them. Do they just want to know because they want to mock you or give you a hard time or it's sensational to them? F those people. And and, and, and that has stuck with me for a really long time because it's like that one of those regular things. It's like if somebody's just asking questions because they feel like they got to know, they got to know. Well, I don't care what that person thinks. And so I'm just right. going to tell them whatever and I want them to move along. I don't, I don't want a relationship with somebody like that. But whenever I meet somebody who's just even just a little bit genuinely like, I just am a little curious, like, can you help me understand that a little bit more? It's like I am more than willing to share with those types of people because they want to know from a genuine human connection standpoint, not from just some crazy curiosity. Totally. I actually love when people go, can I ask you a question? Yeah, like, right. Okay, <laughs> go for it. Let's see where we're going. <laughs> exactly. I know. It's, you and never know what you're going to get with that. And often yeah. they're really sweet. And, uh, you know, I think we're moving, hopefully, you know, moving in through some ugly stuff into a place of more acceptance and diversity right. and openness. I just feel like we all have a superpower and the more we can kind of connect and network and know each other who are very different, the, the better we all are, Absolutely. which, um, takes us right into tell me what you're up to now. Like you're a avid community <laughs> builder. I love what you're doing with share house. Tell me about your work. Like let's get into yeah. what, what's current now. Absolutely. So, so my day job is I run marketing for an e-commerce SaaS company called Q pilot. And basically what we're selling is a subscription tool for brands that are selling like on WooCommerce and Shopify. So you're selling pet food, CBD, you know, cosmetics, other types of things. We're a subscription platform. And so one of the interesting things is like doing that for a while, we were focused on a lot of these different forms of lead gen, whether running paid ads and doing other stuff. And, and ultimately we found some of the most success with community and content, which just so happens to be my two strengths, which is creating content and educating and training and then community building. So 
Um, you know, earlier this year we pivoted from, uh, we launched what's called subscription prescription. So it's like a newsletter, YouTube channel, a lot of stuff yeah. where we're helping educate people on the power of subscription and how to craft great experiences. And then also, um, you know, I was doing a marketing group for a while that just kind of started because I was a solo marketer and was meeting with other solo marketers and we would just talk shop and help each other figure things out. And that kind of bloomed into this, this Slack channel and this big group. And then a lot of that was just you know, somebody telling me, oh, you should do more of this and just finding out how it works. And then, um, some, some people that I really like, we kind of joined forces to create an e-commerce focused community called ShareHouse. Um, so that's kind of local. We do events, we, um, have a Slack channel. Um, and again, it's about connecting and bringing people together with an e-commerce space. Cause it's often overlooked as a space. Like it's a, often a subset of like Silicon slopes or these other places, but Utah is like a phenomenal thriving e-commerce community. Um, and then, um, getting involved in some other communities. Um, that's really exciting too, with, um, helping build them up with an e-commerce space, kind of a few exciting things around the corner there. Um, and then we're going to be doing with the subscription stuff, a lot more workshops and, you know, I love just consulting and working with companies, helping them figure that out. And sometimes that means we get some great customers and sometimes it just means people are better at subscriptions for it. So, and that's okay too. You know, positioning yourself, I, you're doing this brilliantly. Um, and I think everybody can learn from this. Like you take what you do well and then become the person who's teaching people all about that. Like you're doing that with subscription mm -hmm. prescription. And it's like on LinkedIn, you're becoming the person who knows how to do the subscriptions, which only sends people to what you're doing with QPilot. And it's like, right. um, it's just like, let's just nerd out on marketing for a second. Like, tell sure. me your thinking behind that because yeah. it's just genius. And, um, yeah. Well, I'd say, so, um, one of the biggest, uh, I can't call him a mentor because he's not mentoring me, but I'm in his groups and communities is Dave Gerhart. He runs a community mm -hmm. called exit five. And I joined that a couple of years ago. Somebody kind of turned me on to it. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the interesting things, Kat, I will say about getting out at 37 and like trying to figure out some of this marketing stuff is in many ways, I don't have a lot of like lit long experience. You know, I wasn't part of the Facebook ads boom or all this other stuff that people were a part of. I'm fairly new to it. And so I'm just trying to soak up as much information I can and find what works as quickly as possible. And so I listen to a lot of people that seem like they've got it figured out and or that I know have figured out and that it resonates with me. Right. So you know, um, one of those things is like this Dave Gerhardt guy. And, and he was, he's been talking about it for a long time that, you know, people aren't buying from companies they are buying from experts, right? Like people yeah. are buying from, from people. And in many ways, I love, that's why I love e-commerce. Like this idea with D to C versus B to B and the buying processes are so different and all this stuff. Well, what's actually really working is when people connect with the brand and it's hard for people to connect with QPilot. We're just, we're a SaaS company. We're not that big. It's not like we have a huge presence on LinkedIn or anything like that. So a lot of our, we see though, within the subscription space is there are a few people that talk about subscriptions, but it's a huge component of revenue for e-commerce stores, but it's not like it's a massive content. There's not a lot of people out there doing it. No. So for us, we see a long-term opportunity to position ourselves as the de facto experts in the subscription yep. space. And that's what we're doing. And, um, a lot of the content and, you know, with the workshops and speaking engagements and things like that, that we're ramping up, um, a lot of podcast appearances. Um, it's, you know, we have 250 plus customers that are teaching us what works or not, and that we help them. And I work directly with a lot of them. Um, we do, we pull data, all this stuff. So we have a lot of information. It's not like I'm just you know, a guy who worked at one company, <laughs> you know, it's not, you know, I mean, there's, a, there's a plenty of people out in the e-commerce space that did say they did marketing at one company really well or Facebook ads. And so now they talk about Facebook ads at nauseum because they were successful at one company. We have a lot of brands behind us that are figuring this out that we work with. And so we're just leveraging a lot of that data and those insights. And then as well as learning from everybody else in the space and trying to put it in a way that's consumable and actionable and all those buzzwords. Um, but yeah, that is definitely the motion. And and the community part too, because people, I, I mean, again, I just, it, it's just one of those things where I start to see that, like I mentioned that exit five, uh, uh, marketing group, people in that group will ask, Hey, who uses this software? Does anybody have a good recommend here? And then they'll get a recommend and then they'll just go use them. And it's, it's the simplest buying process there is in many ways. And so for like, I get seeing that happen 
firsthand myself, it's like, oh, well, that's how my customers are buying in many ways too. They're going to a group and they're asking them, hey, who's a good alternative to XYZ software? Oh, you should go check these people out. Or, and then when I'm active in the community, if somebody has a subscription question, they point at me and they say, oh, you should talk to Matt, see what Matt says, yeah. Matt, what Matt thinks. And so it's just changing and, and we're still early days with it. It's, we're not, we haven't reached like a lot of scale of it, but it's something we're seeing some success from and, and see the future as. Yeah, that combination of doing thought leadership with your personal brand, doing education with your platform and doing community building. I'm like, no, oh, that's the <laughs> trifecta. Yeah. That's the future. Like people it don't want to be preached at from brands. Right. They want to learn from Matt or from Cat. It's like whether right. it's a co-working space or a subscription dog food product or whatever, right. it's like, Help us do our work better. And um, I, I truly feel like every anybody who wants to be furthering their work in this way should be building their personal brand and positioning themselves as an expert around whatever it is they do. And just like teaching, 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 teaching. Yeah, that. And, you, and, you, and you don't have to be the, like there's, you know, like pushback on these YouTube influencers. They're like renting a jet for, uh, for 15 <laughs> minutes for a photo shoot or something like that. Right. Like you don't have, just because you haven't done it for 20 years, doesn't mean you can't be an expert in some way, or at least have an interesting angle or thought. I think that being really specific is really helpful. Um, you know, uh, I, I talk about that. I've worked closely with these brands. I haven't been doing it. I've been doing it for two years. So, you know, I think that the quality of the content ends up speaking for itself. When people find out I've only been doing it for two years, they are not turned off. They're like, Oh, you haven't been doing it for five. Eh. No, it's right. because they're consuming the content and the co content works for them. And so I think that's a lot of it too. You have to figure out what your audience wants to learn from and and we're still in that process we, we talk a lot about what we learn, but then I have these, you know, I like doing these free consults because I get to learn a ton too. I can share my advice and help you do better, but then also I get to hear about what you're struggling with or what you hate. And then that gives me more content opportunities. Yeah. It's staying really close to the people we serve. It's just like yep. this loop that just keeps going around. Everybody does better. Yep. Matt, I could talk with you for days. <laughs> Let's keep it going another time. But thank you okay. so, so much. Um, what do you want people to know about you and where? what's the best way to connect? Uh, well, I am big on LinkedIn. So if you're on there, please look me up. Matthew Holman, QPilot. Um, and I mean, I guess I'd say that's it. Okay. Thank you so much, Matt. It's an absolute pleasure. I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you, Kat.